hidden meaning of truth and untruth, part two. Questioner, you are saying that it is relative truth, aren't you? Dadashri, yes, this is relative truth. So the truth of this world is relative truth. Yes, the truth of this world is from the viewpoint of worldly people. Just as the currency of this country will not work in another country, what may be considered as the truth in a certain region may not be the truth in another country. Page 6 Therefore, there is no reliability at all. The truth actually means a deduction, taravni. Your truth is different, his truth is different, that person's truth is different, and moreover, the common truth is different. Deduction means the extract of something. For example, in our community, we should live like this. Similarly, every community, every country, every caste, every group makes deductions, and everybody accepts it as the truth. Questioner, it is said that one can come close to the truth, but not achieve it. Dadashi, yes, one cannot achieve it. All these truths are truths according to people's viewpoints. Now, based on the truth from these viewpoints, the big thinkers have derived what the common truth ought to be. This is the discovery of the thinkers. That is the common truth. They have formed that into law. However, even that is not the truth. That is all worldly truth. Therefore, all the truth, starting from 0 degrees to 360 degrees, it all varies, and it comprises of conflicting opinions. Therefore, no one can tackle this. Common truth means everyone gets together and decides that stealing is certainly wrong. A majority of the people will accept that. To give a donation is good. If he's studying, then that's good. If he's wasting time and wandering aimlessly, then that's bad. They have decided on these common truths. Then they have formed these into law. Yet they are relative truths and they comprise of conflicting opinions. One will say, ours is right, whereas the other will say, ours is right. They both prove to be wrong. Therefore, there is no end to this. When can there be an end? If they come to the real truth, then these matters will end. That which is the real truth does not change. There, there is only one viewpoint. Real truth is of one viewpoint. Relative truth encompasses various viewpoints. That is not actually the truth. Nische means the complete, purna truth, whereas vevar means truth up to a certain extent. Yes, it's a truth based on viewpoints, whereas the other truth, the nische truth, is the truth from the center. Heading, there is no untruth with reference to God. Therefore, neither truth nor untruth is eternal, it is merely a societal discovery. Therefore, this is all based on society, rationalism. It is an offense to remarry in certain cultures, whereas in some countries people will remarry within an hour. It is considered legal. So it varies. It is a relative phenomenon. However, that truth lies implicitly within certain laws. The relative phenomenon is there, and it's correct in a certain way. There's no need to raise objection to it. But it's not eternal. Page 7. Questioner. How can we make an adjustment between the truth and untruth? Dadashi. Truth and untruth arise from illusion. With reference to God, the Self, they are one and the same, whereas people have delineated the two. For you, eating meat is an act of violence, hinsa, whereas for a Muslim, it is non-violence, ahinsa. Therefore, this is all subjective, whereas for God, both are the same. They are simply one pudgal, non-self complex of input and output. And the way it is for God, it prevails that way for me. And that is what I am teaching you. These are circumstances, and they have the nature of dissipating. But people are stuck in the duality of this is right and this is wrong. Ultimately, they are all pudgal, and the self is different. The self is the real truth. It is the eternal truth. He says, and the way it is for Lord Mavir, it prevails that way for me. And that's what I'm teaching you. When we say devalue the relative, it's in the sense that it's worth putting value to the real truth, 
whereas the relative truth is limited to running the worldly life. But one should not have so much insistence for it that he brings sorrow to himself and others. So value it to the extent needed to handle worldly interactions. We should have enough understanding to not get into attachment or abhorrence for the relative truth. However, all these people have become preoccupied in this, in that which is subjective. That is why all this knowledge has disappeared. Otherwise, there is no such thing as truth and untruth with reference to God. This is all actually temporary. We have simply divided one thing into two parts. So all these truths are actually untruth. This truth is societal in nature. Yes, it is a societal arrangement. It has been created to prevent people in society from hurting one another. Questioner. That, too, is surely a relative truth, isn't it? Dadashi. Yes, it is a relative truth, but a social construct has been created that this is not considered the truth. If you take something, then you would say, yes, I have taken it. But what if you were to say, I haven't taken it? What does truth or satya mean? It is to say it exactly the way it happened. Therefore, this is a social construct that has been created. This is how the truth has been accepted. Hmm, it is to say it exactly the way it happened. Therefore, this is a social construct that has been created. This is a construct created by the society to say things the way they happened. And if one lies, Dada gives a simple example. If you take something, then you would say, yes, I've taken it. That's considered truth. But if you were to say, I haven't taken it, I don't know about it, then that's considered untruth. Many people keep a witness. Be the witness. I'm lending these things to him. He's taken this and I've given it to him. You're the witness. But then the witness turns hostile. If the lender tells the witness, I lent him these things, but he's not returning them now, the witness will say, who gave it? You have not given him anything. Oh, I did. You witnessed it. To which the witness replies, no, nothing like that has happened. So here, the witness lies. He betrays. That falls under untruth. So these are adjustments created by the society for the happiness of people. Otherwise, the subtler aspect is that it is a karmic account. Lending is a karmic account, and the receiver is accepting it. So the karmic account is settled there. Now, if it's in his karmic account to return the thing, and in your karmic account to receive it, then you'll get it back. So at the subtle level, it's not in your control. It is in the control of Vivastit to give and take, to come and go. All this runs under the control of Vivastit. But in worldly interaction, people say, I gave it, you took it, now you're not returning it, you've betrayed me. In this way, worldly interactions arise. And this is correct in the worldly life. But for those who want to go to moksha, if you don't get back what you've lent, then accept it. Whatever has happened is vivastit. My karmic account is settled. He has not betrayed me, but my karma is finishing and he is not at fault. Then you're free for moksha. So there are two viewpoints. One is the relative viewpoint and the other is the real viewpoint, the viewpoint of the self. The viewpoint of the self includes the five agna, faultless vision, and the vision of the pure soul. All that helps us in bringing solutions for not quarreling for the relative truth in the worldly life and helps in opening up the path of purusharth or spiritual efforts to progress as the self for moksha. Questioner. When a mango is consumed and it tastes sweet, then that is considered an incidence of the truth, isn't it? Page 8. Dadashri. No, that is not an incidence of the truth. Nor is it untruth. That is a relative truth. It is not the real truth. Relative truth is that truth which will perish after a while. Therefore, that truth cannot be called the truth at all, can it? The truth should be permanent. So all this is like, if the tongue is fine, then the food will taste good. However, if there are blisters on the tongue or if his jaws are hurting, then the poor fellow will have no pleasure. Therefore, eating a mango is not the permanent truth. It's a relative truth. Heading, The Truth About Celestial Beings Someone may ask, Is it really true that these protective celestial deities, Shasan Devio, exist? 
No, that is not the real truth. It is relative truth, meaning that it is an imagined kalpit truth. Just as we have the interactions of a mother-in-law, father-in-law, and son-in-law, that is how that interaction works. There will be a need for this as long as one is within worldly life and believes worldly life to be the truth, as long as wrong beliefs are believed to be right beliefs. It's completely a wrong belief. I'm Chandubai is a wrong belief. They'll ask for your identity card. But hey, the identity card is based on me, and you're trying to prove my identity based on that? But it works like that, doesn't it? They'll say, what's the proof that you're Deepak Bhai? Then we have to show them our photo, our passport. Okay, now you can go ahead. So the wrong beliefs are considered to be the right beliefs. These celestial deities are there for a certain period of time, and in their next birth, they would have returned in the human life in the form of a man or a woman. So it changes after a certain period. Just like how there's a father-in-law and a son-in-law, but after a certain period of time, that would have changed. Yes, after two or three lives, that father-in-law would have become the son-in-law and the son-in-law would have become the father-in-law. This is how the relative truth is. It's based on time. Heading, the nature of worldly life and the self. This worldly life is not something to be considered trivial. It is a projection, vikalp, of the self, atma. The self, pote, by its nature, becomes what it envisions, kalpaswarup, and this worldly life is in the form of this projection, vikalpaswarup. There are only these two. The self, or pote, by its nature becomes what it envisions, or kalpaswarup. From this kalp, the act of becoming what it envisions, and with the pressure of circumstances, the vikalp, the belief that I am Chandubai and all the relative I-ness that stems from it, arose. From the ignorance of the self, the worldly life arose from this vikalp. Now, if one becomes nirvikalpi, or free from the belief that I am Chandubai, then the worldly life will dissolve and the self will once again become kalp sorup. So this projection, vikalp, is not something to be discarded. This vikalp is the relative truth, and kalp, the self, is the real truth. All these vikalp are relative truths. Vikalp means, I'm the husband, and sankalp, or the relative minus, means, the wife is mine. All these vikalp and sankalp, they're the relative truth. They're not to be discarded. These are truths to the extent of the functioning of the society. To go to moksha, see everyone as the self. He is the self, and so am I. That is the real truth. That will take you to moksha. Everything known in this worldly life is an imagined truth. All this talk is imagined truth, but this imagined truth is needed. This is because the signboard on the way to the station is an imagined truth, but it is on the basis of that signboard that you are able to reach your destination, are you not? Nevertheless, it is an imagined truth. It is not the actual truth. And upon knowing the actual truth, there is nothing else left to know. There is no end to knowing the imagined truth. Even after infinite lifetimes, there will be no end to it. No matter how much you know, it'll bring sorrow, fear, and hard times. If someone knows more than you, then he'll be paid more. And since you know less, you'll be paid less. The relative truth is like this. There's a superior above a person, and a second superior above the first superior, a third superior above the second, and a fourth above the third, and also, there are people under him. There is no end to this. And whatever you know is anyway incomplete, or in the next life, it'll be gone, and you have to start knowing it all over again. Whereas once you know the real truth, and all the karmic accounts finish off, then you'll go to moksha. So this relative truth is the imagined truth. It's the believed truth. Page 9. Heading. Scarcity Forged Established Values Questioner. Were established values created for a reason? Dadashri, due to scarcity, that which is scarce has tremendous value. Otherwise, no one cares about properties. Gold does not really have any special properties. It has certain properties. However, its scarcity makes it valuable. What would happen if a surplus of gold were to come out of a mine right now? Its value would depreciate. How long is a doctor valuable? 
If there's an abundance, if there are 200 doctors and only three barbers, then the doctors would queue up at the barber shop. Why? Because this population has increased and that population has decreased. Therefore, in the world in life, value is established based on scarcity. The established values, gold is valuable, diamonds are even more valuable, and platinum is even more valuable. Values put on a variety of things based on their shortages. If they are available in abundance, then they will get devalued. How amazing are Dada's findings? He's revealing the mysteries of the world as they are. So there's no need to have the ego that I'm superior. If gold were to have the ego that no one is as valuable as me, then no. Another valuable thing may come up if that's in shortage. So there's no need to have the ego of I am something special in any matter. You may be special or correct from a certain viewpoint, and someone else may be correct from another viewpoint. Questioner. Happiness, misery, truth, untruth, these are dualistic in nature. They too are considered established values, aren't they? To tell the truth is considered valuable. To tell a lie is not considered good. Dadashri. Yes, those are all considered established values. This is referring to the same thing. That right value and this wrong value are one and the same. That which you believe to be right and wrong are all considered established values. That is all the function of ignorance. And this has been decided in the illusory state, Brant Swabhav. It is all justice of an illusory state. Justice definitely exists in any state, doesn't it? So these established values are of a different kind. The pound was worth 30 rupees. Then it went up to 50 rupees, then 80 rupees, and 100 rupees. As time progresses, its value also changes. The dollar is worth a certain value. These are established values. Everyone will come together and decide, what is the value right now? Then they'll say, uh, put the value of a pound at 90 rupees right now. But then, why did the price change after a few days? Because everyone decided to put the value of 105 rupees. These values are decided in the Brant Sobhav, or the illusory state, in the state of the ignorance of the self. And it is worldly interaction, so it's not wrong either. But value has been placed by people through worldly interactions. Then they all come together and run it. He'll say, it's a quarter to six right now. But what about five days ago? Then he'll reply, no, the clock has been turned forward by one hour. In the UK and elsewhere, they adjust the clocks. Everyone decided on it, that the time should be changed now. That's why it's considered an established value, a relative truth. It's not permanent. After some time, it'll change and they'll turn the clock backwards by an hour. Therefore, this truth and untruth only exists as far as worldly interaction is concerned. Heading, in God's view. Do not place undue insistence on this worldly truth, relative truth. It is, by its very inherent nature, untruth. What is relative truth? Page 10. It is the truth only as far as maintaining the arrangement of society is concerned. It is the truth as far as society is concerned. It is not the truth with reference to God. If you were to tell God, Lord, this person is doing good work, then God would respond, He will bear his karmic effect, and this person will bear his karmic effect. If he's doing bad work, then he'll bear the karmic effect of that. And if he's doing good work, then he'll bear the good effects. But they're all planting seeds and enjoying the fruits. The self has nothing to do in this. One will reap whatever he sows. I have nothing to do with it. If one plants a mango tree, then he will get a mango tree. And if he plants something else, then he will reap that. It's the truth only as far as maintaining the arrangement of society. Good, bad, right or wrong is all relative truth. Therefore, Dada has given the essence, be it good or correct, but if it hurts others, then it's wrong. You should come out of that. Do not hurt anyone, otherwise they will bind vengeance with you. Do not hurt anyone. Even if it's right or wrong, even if it's good or bad, we do not have the right to hurt anyone. Questioner. Why is it this way? Shouldn't God at least make some differentiation? Dadashri, if he makes any differentiation, then he is not God at all. 
because to God, both of these things are equal. Giving money is considered a donation, but if it's taken away, then that's considered stealing. Donation and stealing are worldly interactions that have arisen. He'll say, my money is gone, it was stolen. Or, they gave me this much money, they made a donation. So these are worldly truths. What does God say? If you do wrong, that which is considered wrong by society, it's considered wrong because it gives sorrow. Donations are considered good because they give happiness, and stealing is considered wrong because it gives sorrow to others. Therefore, society is established right and wrong based on whether it gives happiness or sorrow to others. God has nothing to do in this. God says, become vitrag. Do not get into attachment and abhorrence. Questioner, but if we were to do such a thing in worldly interaction, then it would be disastrous. Dadashi, such a thing should not be done in worldly interaction. However, with reference to God, the self, it is not differentiated in this way. God actually sees both as equal. God does not favor one over the other. Yes, how wise God is. Is he not wise? Much wiser than us. He gave findings to the world in a way that he never got trapped anywhere in any bondages. Here, we have both impoverished people as well as wealthy people. People keep criticizing the poor and praising the rich. God is not like that. For God, the impoverished person is the same and the wealthy person is the same. He gives equal reservation to both. Someone is impoverished in the relative. If one has incurred a loss of 10 million rupees and one has made a profit of 10 million rupees, the first one is considered impoverished and the other is considered wealthy. If both come into Gnan, then they're equal. But in ignorance, one will feel, I'm bad, I've become impoverished, and people condemn him. Without money, he's called names. But if he becomes wealthy, he's addressed as sir. People keep praising him and they keep criticizing the other. He's binding karma by the praise he's getting and the other is also binding karma by the criticism he's facing. The world's arrangement is such that one leaves bad karma and binds good karma and progresses further and further. Whereas if you want to go towards the self, if you want to understand God, you want to realize God, then you need to come out of these dualities of good and bad. Questioner, how can we say for sure that God sees both as equal? Dadashri, it is because God is beyond duality. Therefore, he does not accept dualities. Duality is an instrument for the functioning of worldly life, whereas God is beyond duality. So in this way, we can say that God does not accept either of these. If one person is drinking alcohol and the other person is not drinking alcohol, then the one not drinking will be considered good in the society and the other will be criticized for drinking. But the subtle aspect is that the one who does not have an ego is valuable in front of God. Page 11 Those who have believed worldly interaction to be real and have remained stuck on it have developed high blood pressure and heart attacks and other ailments, whereas those who consider worldly interaction to be false have become strong and stout. Those who keep their feet on either side have strayed away. We the nani are free of all attachment, vitrag, while residing in worldly interaction. If you consider the worldly interactions as false, what does it mean to consider it as false? Get into corruption, get into misconduct, and get into adultery. Just enjoy. Whereas another person will say, we cannot accept falsehood or wrong things, which will also cause quarrels. The one who believes in the right things will start to abhor the wrong and become insistent for the right. He is also at a loss. And the one doing wrong things also suffers in a different way. Both of them will end up wandering. Dada says that we are vitrag despite residing in worldly interactions. J. Sachidanand.